moving joystick down and up will change the brightness left and right will change the sound so if you're using the hdmi sound through the hdmi cable which i never do then you can actually change the sound and if you have your headphones connected to the monitor if you press the joystick then you get the menu you moved it up you switched off your monitor then you press the joystick again now it's on got some lights there some information what can be used what cannot be used then if you press it in the middle it's exit so it will exit this menu if you press it and then you press it to the left you've got inputs only three inputs you've got hdmi 1 2 and then the display port i will not be changing the inputs right now and the game mode which is on the bottom is a quick access menu for the various kinds of different screen presets you've got here you see your hertz you see the adaptive sync on or off dash mode more about it a bit later uh, you've got the 50 black stabilizer that that's very interesting thing we'll talk about later as well and that's fast response time response time of your screen we'll talk about it later again in the extended menu and then you go from left to right you just change the presets so basically this menu is for having a quick access to those screen presets nothing else the main information is here so let's move here and let's see what we've got there it disappears so quickly probably i need to change that setting if it even exists so once you hit the right button the menu moves to the right and sorry i'll have to keep moving up and down from time to time because this menu disappears and there is no setting to make it longer so on the top we've got our quick access info menu we've got our hertz value adaptive sync whether it's on or off same as hdr we've got our response time value and then we have the dash mode the dash means dynamic action sync so it's something like low latency mode for lg monitors interesting thing is it's automatically on when the refresh rate is 60 you cannot switch it off and uh, you don't really care about this stuff really so i don't really know why it's always reflected there maybe there are some use cases where it should be but generally what it says it does the latency processing first and then it does all the image processing so it never does image processing prior to the signal processing so it makes it good for low latency so it makes it good for gaming so that's what it is you've got the game mode menu the main menu which has a couple of sub menus those sub menus are exactly the same presets you've seen on the quick action menu except you've got a couple more of those you've got gamer one gamer two which are basically your user defined profiles you can change them then you've got fps rts vivid reader reader which is everything becomes yellow and then you've got hdr effects super duper bright which is not something i really like and then you've got the srgb my favorite one the one that's used by me mostly for to edit videos edit photographs and do all the office work so the srgb is true srgb i've tested it with the x-rite color checker really like that one all the others are not really 100 accurate the gamer one gamer two are accurate if you set them properly and they will show the adobe rgb color gamut which is great the srgb will show the srgb color gamut so which is also great all the others i don't really use because uh, i think they distort the colors too much and i don't really think that's good so i'll keep it on the gamer one and let's move to the next menu so going into the game adjust menu you've got the overclock which is the first one and maybe either on or off if it's off the maximum hertz value you can set is 144 hertz let me show it to you you can see the windows window here so 144 is 143 44 is the highest you can get after you switch the overclock on switching it on the monitor reboots you need to wait a little now you can actually change it to the 160. so now it's 160 now here you see it's changed to 160 however now we cannot change the adaptive sync which is always on for the overclocked monitor screen which is fine the only downside of overclock is that if you switch on the hdr currently you see the color value here the 8-bit rgb standard dynamic range 
let's go into the HDR and I'm switching all the time because I need this menu to be up so sorry about that switching the HDR on the HDR is on here we've got 160 Hertz however if we go into the color menu you can see it's 8 bit with dithering which is the same color except it does some of the noise so that noise blocks the signal so the signal becomes smaller in general that's something that it does uh, you can't really see it with your naked eye some people say they can see it i cannot see it so basically you can use it but if you want the cleanest possible hdr you need to change your hertz value to 120 so i've changed it to 120 and now it's full 10 bit color no dithering nothing but you have to use 120 in that case you don't really need the hour clock i personally use it always in 120 160 is uh, not needed for me but sometimes when i play the csgo cs2 some competitive stuff which i rarely do but i may sometimes put it to 160 so that's nice to have now i switch it off and now we have adaptive sync on or off we may have it on or off don't really see a reason to have it off ever then we have the black stabilizer something i have never used i will never use basically what it does makes the dark areas brighter or darker so it makes everything that sh should be black it makes it whiter so you can see your enemies in the corners somewhere but for me color criticality is more important i like when color is perfect and the way it should be so i don't want to have this milky blacks so i always keep it on 50 which is the default normal blacks then we have the response time this one is interesting i don't really see any difference between fast normal and off and i will demonstrate it right now to you so whenever i change the modes from fast to normal to off and i look at the ufo test i don't see anything anything at all i don't see anything happening but if i change it to faster let me show you what happens check out you see the shift in color Let's, let's do it one more time. Look at the edges of the UFO. The color shifts quite visibly. So apparently the top value here does a lot of distortion. So I don't think it's a good idea to use it. But for some competitive players, probably the faster makes sense. They don't care about the color. They will need the speed. But competitive players will not use this monitor anyway. So I don't think that's a relative use case then we go and we see the crosshair you can have this crosshair on your screen for some weapons it makes difference if you want to shoot from those weapons that don't have an in-game crosshair but frankly i don't really use this stuff and i don't really know people who do and then you have game reset which is a nice feature to reset everything here in case you forgot what you changed what needs to be changed what doesn't you just reset everything not everything just this menu to go into the next menu the picture just i had to switch the cables from the display port to hdmi to show you all of the features and the overclock is now not available it's not available through the hdmi as well as the hertz value is 75 75 is the maximum this monitor can do with the hdmi 2.0 so in the picture adjust menu we've got the brightness plain and simple contrast plain and simple sharpness not really using this one this one is on default not really a typical thing you have in monitor menus but yeah here we have sharpness as well you've got gamma i keep it on mode 4 because i checked the manual it says that mode 4 is typical default gamma value for this monitor unless you want to modify it then you can use mode 3 2 1 color temperature you've got warm medium cool manual warm medium cool those are presets which are not color accurate i check them so i keep it on custom and then i go to rgb and i had to modify the red only one digit down so it became perfect with the x right color checker then it showed me perfect calibration so it means that if you keep it on 50 50 50 the default you are close to perfect even i say perfect because this one digit is not really something that makes a difference so this monitor's color calibration out of the box from the factory is, is pretty good. I say it's flawless. Six color is just a fancy way to calibrate the RGB. 
sorry color people probably have said something very stupid right now but yeah for me it looks like something enhanced extended menu of the typical rgb you just have more control over the six color menus and then you have the black level which is high or low available only for the hdmi and now let's let me demonstrate what it does so it's full versus limited rgb which is basically it looks something like this if you have it full you have all the layers of the possible tints of white and black if you change it to low basically you lose some details here you see you see fewer blacks you see fewer whites here fewer grays different shades of gray you should see 50 shades of gray in every situation but now yeah you can change it to high you can change it to low but basically this setting only for the hdmi display port shows full only and uh, frankly there are many articles online speaking about this like most of the tv stuff is encoded in 16 to 235 format which is the low limited rgb but it's just it feels safer to keep it always on full if you have something limited you will see it as limited it's fine but you can display the high profile if you see it in full rgb then you display it if you put it on low you will always see low so i don't see a point doing this if you haven't this option in your monitor just keep it on high and it will be fine so navigating back into our menu we have found that high black level is the one that we need going down we've got a dfc which is digital fine contrast some fancy feature of lg that makes the whole screen dimmer in some situations i always keep it on off i don't really want lg i don't really want this monitor to modify brightness values on demand and demand being the content being shown on the screen so it determines using some algorithms the content on the screen should be darker so then it makes everything darker or brighter but you may cap it you may cap the brightness if you make the highest brightness like 300 nits it will not go higher than that but i don't really see this feature as something that that's useful so i always keep it on off and then you've got the picture reset that resets this menu completely which is nice in some situations haven't used it but yeah why not let's move to the next one the input and the input is very similar to what you've had in the quick access menu you've got three options there hdmi hdmi display port ratio this one is nice you've got the full wide whatever is in the signal will go extended on the screen so everything will be stretched to the full screen and then you've got the original so it keeps the original uh, however it is fit to the screen the original if, if it's square it will be extended but it will not be stretched and then you've got just scan so it will keep the original aspect ratio and it will also keep the original size of the source so if it's like 600 to 800 it will be really small on your screen but will be the original one without any fitting to the screen and then you've got the auto input switch which is a nice feature actually maybe on or off there is no explanation here but this feature what it does if you attach some cable hdmi or display port then it gives you a prompt you may quickly go to that source by clicking on the joystick if you decide to do so so i actually found this very useful when i attach my laptop and i want to quickly go to that source and now let's move into the last menu which is the general so we've got a waves max audio off earbuds on ear over the ear basically it works with the hdmi sound signal and models the sound so it looks nicer but again that's not really professional audio equipment just some gimmick it seems to me however i haven't personally tested it maybe it's good you never know so we've got languages quite a few of those actually for those of you who want to see this please do so then you've got the smart energy saving mode which is typical for this business variant so it's nice i always keep it on off because i'm afraid it may switch the monitor or it may make it shine less i don't really know what it does guys but it seems to me it's for the offices and for the stuff that people go to have lunches and they keep their monitors on all the time which never happens to me so i don't really need something like this so the lighting option keep lighting status or turn off lighting so it means that the backlight on your monitor when you switch the your computer off the light will still be on 
for some people may be useful if you want to use it as your room lights for some reason then you've got the power led on or off a small red led light inside of your joystick which is very very low so you don't really see it even in the dark but still you may switch it off if you decide to do so then you've got the automatic standby i never have it in some of the other lg monitors i've had for some reason sometimes they were going to sleep it was difficult to wake them up again so not something that i need and uh, i always keep it on off then you've got the hdmi compatibility which i couldn't manage to switch on maybe you use some old hdmi devices so it switches on automatically basically what it does if the hdmi variant of your device is lower than 2.0 you need compatibility for that so maybe it switches on during those times but i couldn't manage and uh, yeah maybe if i find some older devices i will but i don't really see a reason to do it display port version 1.4 the maximum one it depends on your device if you have some old graphics card maybe you need to use 1.2 1.1 but should be working automatically even on 1.4 then you've got the local dimming and this is a very interesting feature um, let me show it to you so you can see the screen right here in front of you and uh, it's actually very uniform very uniform i don't know why you see this cross in the middle somehow my camera shoots it that way but it's actually uniform so you just have to trust me so uh, right now the variable backlight is, is off you don't see anything happening on the screen yeah it's just a milky ips typical ips screen if we go into the menu and we go into the local dimming we put it on auto on auto it just sometimes switches on sometimes switches off on some random occasions so i never put it on auto i never put it on on but for the sake of this test let's put it on on let's see what happens and this is what happens so the screen follows the cursor which is white on black background and this is really terrible i don't really know how this is supposed to be hdr but it's not even a gimmick it's just some kind of a joke basically this monitor has eight dimming zones and you can actually count those one two three four and then you've got four on the top so eight dimming zones uh, how is this supposed to work i don't know because my acer x27 has 384 dimming zones even that is not enough i'm not satisfied i wanted to buy the one variant with the 512 dimming zones and even that was somehow i thought like it's not enough and there are some variants with 2000 dimmin zones very expensive so i didn't buy that but this one has eight so eight dimmin zones looks to me like some marketing thing and still they implemented this they spent some money and research to put it there i think it's useless it costs some money to do but yeah they've got this marketing thing so they put it there it has dimmin zones but you see what it is actually and at, if you start using this for serious for real you start using this it's very distracting you just see this like shift in colors shift in the brightness everywhere and uh, it's not really adding to the experience but it's actually makes it much worse so i haven't really used it i tried it i tested it i tried hdr with it but i'm uh, yeah it doesn't work so the local demon is being kept on off let's move next the variable backlight the way those dimming zones work i keep it on off because i keep the local dimming on off by the way this variable backlight works only in hdr can be normal fast faster so basically the way those dimming zones react to the environment faster or slower it doesn't really matter you've got 12 of those yeah not eight 12 of those and uh, yeah doesn't matter because you don't use them then you've got the buzzer uh, actually a nice thing i don't know why it, it beeps when you switch the monitor on for some reason i like it. it's very low nice noise <laughs> yeah strange thing yeah strange thing to like about this monitor the buzzer and you've got the osd lock uh, let's try it on let's put on on what it does basically blocks most of the menu probably from kids i guess then you put on off then you've got the information now we can actually see for how much time i have used this monitor seven thousand hours so i'm pretty qualified to make this review i guess 
and then you've got the resolution and then you may reset your settings as in every previous menu so um, that's about it actually those were all of the menus in some cases guys if you haven't known some of your menus now you have the full coverage